Welcome back to the 15th Club podcast presented by Elite Golf Schools of Arizona and Colorado. Uh, this is Alex Lobeck. I am joined with um, my fellow coach, Alex Trevino. Trev, what's going on? What's going on, man? This is going to be a fun topic we got today. I am extremely excited for this. Um, Trevino came to me like three weeks ago. He's like, hey, man, um, I've got some important stuff that I need to share. And we need to talk about ASAP. And I, I, I believe it, rela it re relates exactly to um, what's going on in his life right now, specifically his golf life. Um, Trev, you've been going through some swing changes as of late. That is correct. That is an accurate statement. Yes. Yeah. Trevino has been doing some work in the lab over the last month, two months, and um, he's been doing a lot of good work. And I believe that's what, I mean, he just wants to share it, chat about it. Um, and so we're just going to get into what I would call, we're going to talk about, you know, what goes into making swing changes, what that all covers, what that process looks like. And, and for people that are out there going through their own swing changes, maybe this shed some light on how to go through that process and maybe to kind of de-stress yourself going through some of those swing changes. Cause I know we've all gone through something minor or major, and it seems like every single time it just seems like super stressful so hopefully this is a good way for everyone to kind of see that everyone goes through kind of the same process how to make that process a little easier and we can kind of all make improvements on our own while going through kind of the same process 100 percent, yeah so i'll just give a quick uh backstory for me um life's been hectic so golf yes. golf's been whether it was intentional or not been kind of put to the side but you know i've played forever i love playing the game the game like i enjoy playing golf and not even keeping score like i just like hitting shots doing cool things like a, like a big kid basically um but through that i also like to compete and like my competitive rounds have been lackluster to say the least so i'm just sitting here going okay i can't i also don't like playing bad golf that's not fun so i can relate <laughs> at least to the idea of like bad golf's not fun. Yeah, I'm not shooting, you know, the 90s or 100s. And I can't relate to those people. And I can only imagine how frustrating that can be. But for me, like my standard of playing bad golf is not fun golf. So how long do you want to try and play if it's not going to be fun? Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I try to work or like self-diagnose and be my own coach. It's like, yes, I know some of the information, but I also can't look at myself in real time and know exactly what I'm looking for. So I need, I thought, at least for me, I need a third party. So I reached out, I gotta give this guy credit because he's been awesome to me. Uh, Tyler, I believe it's Tyler Kuntz, Tyler Kuntz, Tyler C-O-O-N-T-S. I don't know this how is his, This is his golf coach, by the way. He doesn't know his last name. Yeah, I, I work with him virtual. So that's a quick plug to him, but also the, if you find a good coach virtually, it can work wonders. But yeah. if I would start there, number one, if you're trying to, if you're tired of playing bad golf, not having fun, you got to go have, you got to trust somebody, but they got to trust someone with your swing and build a plan. So that was number one. Yeah. And I, before you even get a little farther, I want to go back on what you said. It's like you and I, especially like we've been in the game of golf for so long, like literally our whole life. Like yeah. your dad grew up, your dad, you grew up with your dad on the golf course playing golf. I grew up with my dad on the golf course playing golf. So like we were taught from a very early age, this is golf growing up. We worked with like certain swing instructors as we were juniors, as we've gotten older, you and I both, like we've played a ton together. We've practiced a ton together. And now we're like learning kind of the same teaching stuff together. So we have a ton of knowledge in our brain. Like we have more golf information in our brain than the majority of, you know, the the casual golfer or someone who plays golf and 100%. it's it can be really hard for someone who has that much information to ask for outside opinions like yes. we get we get into the habit where it's like we have this knowledge in our brain like we kind of have a good idea okay i'll take a video of my swing i'll assess it and i'll make some some sort of indication Correct. and answer from there right and it's like we get so caught up and we know so much so we try to fix it ourselves that you're right. Like we need outside eyeballs all the time. And like, we yeah. need someone who's objective. That's going to give us facts and tell us stuff that we need to hear, not stuff that we want to hear. Um, 
And so like, you're like, yeah, I'm working with, I'm working with this guy virtually. And I was like, damn, like, yeah. okay. That's when I knew you were like serious about like making these improvements. Cause you weren't just like, Hey man, how's this look? Hey man, how's this look? It's like, no, no, no. I'm going to invest some money into someone really helping me. And I mean, over the last month and a half, two months, like you've made some dramatic improvements. Yes. And yeah, you're, you're hundred percent correct where, and this is where I go to each their own. But for me, I learn better when it's very like stru it's structured or business-like because again, we're players and coaches, but with like our whole coaching staff, we all do it. Hey, like, how's this look? And it's like a quick peek. And I mean, how much, a, how much can you learn in five minutes and B, how much change are you going to make and really invest in over say three months off, you know, say you're looking at my swing and you say, well, this, and I do it. It's like, okay. Yeah. Okay. But then if there's not a follow-up or a check-in, yeah. it goes by the wayside and you run down this rabbit hole of chasing a feel for the day. Well, Lobeck said, I need to feel this. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm feeling that, but I, but I don't know. Lobeck's not here. So I was like, I'm just going to stop wasting my time and let's just, I go see somebody, he tells me what to do, I'll do it. And for me, this is also why I wanted to go back to it was because I had confidence doing this, gosh, three years ago when me and you were playing really good golf and tried out for a uh, um, McKenzie tour, like I had a coach, I'd see him regularly and like that's when I remember me playing my best golf. So it validated doing this again. So fast forward the last month or two, we've worked on a couple things and he's like, listen, he's a big drill stations guy. Like just, you got to rep it and just beat it into your system. And we talk about muscle memory. We talk about this. We talk about that. This might not be earth shattering news, but it's <laughs> not so much muscle memory as it is motor programming in your head. It's yeah. all upstairs. Yep. Your brain patterns to do certain things. Like we talk with Kyle, our strength and conditioning coach. If you have lifted weights a certain way, that's how you do things through life. Like I'm a big extension guy. No wonder why I have early extension in my golf swing. Like everything I do is by doing this. Yep. Golf, we need to, like, we got to go into some flexion. So it's training the brain through various exercises that this is how the body needs to function and it's going to be your brain telling you your parts of your body this is how we need to operate and that's the hardest thing yes that's correct and i i use like I, when i when i'm coaching someone like i i use i'll use the phrase muscle memory for them or just like use the example of like building a muscle just because it's like it's easy to like understand yes. you're like hey man your body's been moving a certain way for a long time and it's obviously not the right way. So it's going to take, boy, is it going to take some time to undo and rebuild Yes, whatever it is you're doing. But you're right. Like if you want to do anything movement related, golf related, muscle related, like it's all, it's all stems back into the brain. Like your brain has that, your, your brain has that movement ingrained in the brain and it, the body just does it because that's what subconscious like it just subconsciously happens the brain calls the shots oh 100 percent. that's why like you that's why you do stuff and you're like i don't even realize why i did it it just happens yeah so when you've been swinging the golf club for the same way for your entire life and you're like i need to make some changes like that's why it requires such like conscious level effort yes to make that yes. those changes 100%. so you've been making changes in your golf swing for you know what two months yeah i uh right yeah we're going on two months i yeah two months so in that in that time frame what has like how do you define success or how do you define kind of improvement and what you've been working on yeah so with with him we've we've identified handful of areas let's say in the swing now it's all part of the same system or it's all part of one motion we have just broken it up so we have these these markers at certain points this is kind of where we'd like to see things moving whether it's the club the body etc so 
we then tailor, we've tailored a couple drills focusing on those areas. So I posted on um, Elite Social. Uh, you might see me looking like a dork with an alignment stick through my belt loops. Yep. Pool an alignment noodles. Stick on the ground, a pool noodle behind me. And people have been asking, what's that thing on your arm? It's from George Gankis. It's the G box or the G shallower. So if you come across this podcast, and you've seen it. That's what it is. Um, shout out George. That's a really cool gadget. And I would have never thought of using it until working with this guy. So some devices can be good, but you don't want to look like the guy who's got 30 of them on or the guy. From, you don't want to look like Tin Cup. Too many. Anyway, um, all of that stuff, all jokes aside, has a purpose. So I'll get into the details for me a little bit, you know, trying to rotate and get around. So the alignment stick through my new the through the hip, through the waistband needs to hit that noodle before the club hits the ball. Now that's like a feel and a reel, but it's oh, I have to rotate and get around versus throw. If I throw my arms, the alignment stick never gets to the noodle. So that's one. So when I'm doing drills, that's what I'm looking for. And Tyler preaches this, and I love I love the phrase, so I've adopted it. It's no pretty swings, like ugly swings only. Like, and Riley talks about this a lot too. Don't you dare try and hit this shot. Don't you dare try to make a pretty swing. Do the movement. If you mm -hmm. focus on the movement over time, you will hit the ball better long term. If you mm -hmm. try to hit the ball, you're going to do it how you know. Yep. So I hit a ball, and I go, okay, cool. Did I do it? And I'll record myself. And that's all I'm looking at is did the alignment stick hit the noodle before the club hit the ball? Am I getting rotated? And it's like, yes, no, pass, fail. And then if it didn't, I look, okay, well, it's probably because of my arms lower versus my body rotating. So yep. then the next five to 10 reps, maybe I go a little slower, maybe I break it down, but it's the same end goal. The alignment stick has to hit the noodle before the, the club does. So the golf ball is simply there as giving me something to hit for real versus practice swing because we all make really good practice swings because there's nothing to hit at. Right. But the ball there, now we want to try and hit the ball versus the move. So for me, when you focus on the move, again, the ball, it's, it's kind of this like contradictory thing. Don't focus on the ball, but yet if you start moving good, the ball is going to respond. So it's like yeah. – don't look too much into it, but also you can use it as an indicator, but it's not this life or death pass or fail based on what the ball did. Yeah. What I, what I really like about that is like, you're giving your, like you're, like you said, like this is a black and white drill. It's very easy to tell yourself, did I do it correctly or did I not? Right. If you record yourself, it's like very easy. Did Lyman stick hit that before? Yes. Okay. Good. Like that's like a check mark. And then. Good. You look at the golf ball and I've always used the example that like the, the golf ball just provides us feedback for what the body did. Right. So like if you're doing, if you're working on it, if, if anyone's working on some sort of drill, like we've all, there are thousands of drills that everyone works on from across and across the world and the, and like the game of golf. So like everyone's got their own drills. If you saw the golf ball as more just feedback for how the body's moving or feedback for how you're swinging the golf club, then that, that, that'll help you kind of figure out what's going on very yes. quickly. Like yes. you're able, you're able to hit a golf shot. You see what the golf ball does. Okay. Goes this way, goes that way, whatever. Then you can assess and kind of break down what happened, make those adjustments for like the next swing. So now you're, you're giving like every swing, you've got a nice purpose to it. And you're consciously having to kind of focus on every single swing you make. It's not just, okay, swing, golf ball, okay, rake, swing, golf ball. Like now there's like, you've got a methodical purpose to it. And that's how like, I've, I've watched you practice for a decade now, but like, you're like psychotic when it comes to the process that you go through on the range. Yeah. TJ and Riley gave me crap last year. Um, Cause I do a ball count. Yeah. So I will legit pull golf balls out of a basket and go, okay, I'm going to hit these 10 doing this. I'm going to hit these five doing that. Yep. And it's like, to me, it's like the gym. There's reps, there's reps and sets. I'm going to yep. do three sets of 10. So mm -hmm. here's 30 golf balls. And it's probably my 
OCD, ADHD, all the things. I don't know. Um, it's also called discipline. Shout out discipline <laughs> and a little psychotic, but for whatever reason, I like having it already pre-organized versus if I have this pile of hundred golf balls, I just lose count because you're focused on what you're doing. So I'm like, was that ball seven or was that ball 10? I don't know. And then for me, at least I get a little distracted. It's like, well, what am I even doing? And the next two rap, reps are kind of crummy. Yeah. So, okay. 10, 10, 10. Okay. Boom. Do it. So I have found the more discipline or like pre set up or whatever you want to call it. Like there's intent, even with just pulling 30 golf balls aside and like counting them out. Okay. These 30 golf balls are for this. And this is hit the noodle before you hit the ball. And I mean, the other day, the last couple weeks, rather, I've had like an hour before uh, Academy. And I'll do the, I'll run through my stuff. I hit 40 golf balls doing like 10 for one thing, 10 for another, 10 for another. And they all build off each other. But long story short, it takes me an hour to hit 40 golf balls. Mm -hmm. Most people are going to rattle through 40 golf balls in about 10 minutes. Cause that's what they sell you before you go play golf. Yeah. Like you got here 30 minutes early. I got time for a small bucket, machine gun, kegel play. Why did I shoot 97? Why did I hit it bad? Well, I mean, we, we work on, like, we literally work on the driving range. Like we see that daily, like you got a person with a bag of golf balls and like they hit an entire bag in 10 minutes. Yes. And it's like, there wasn't one, like you might as well just like have stayed home. <laughs> but you, didn't, like, you, didn't, you didn't get better. And you talk about this a lot where you should show up to the range. And this is partly why I decided to freaking step up to the plate and get coached because you're like you should show up to the range and when you leave you should feel like you got better and for like a month i'm like i show up with some sort of game plan and then i just bail i'm like i didn't get better like this is just this was a waste of time and i was like okay like this is enough but like to your credit you preach you should leave the range feeling like you got better in whatever aspect a better understanding of what you're trying to do maybe you discovered something in whatever you're working on with your coach but you should leave going okay that's another building block as you continue to get better. Yep. So my favorite part of this is I learned this a little while back because we talk about muscle memory, motor programming, the four phases of motor programming. I learned this from the PT I work with, Alan, shout out, Alan. Shout out, Alan. Uh, he talks about, well, he told me there's the four phases. Number one is unconscious incompetence. This is basically, you have no idea what you're doing. You don't know what golf is. You don't know what the club, like, what am I, what is this play? Like, what am I doing in here? Like, I have no, like, no, it's foreign. You have no idea. Yep. So that's number one. Your brain's like, I, what is this? Okay. The next one is conscience, conscious, excuse me, conscious incompetence. You're aware, but you, but you don't know what to do. So this is how you start to learn. Like, okay, we're playing golf, but how do I play golf? What is that? What does that entail? That's number two. So that's where I probably put beginner golfers because they know what sport they're playing. They know they have an idea, but they don't know how to put it to like they don't know how to put it together. Yep. Number three, and this is where probably um I would say average, like junior golfers, you're probably 90s, 80s. Amateur golfer is uh, conscious, conscious competence. You're aware and know what to do, but you don't know how to maximize what you've learned. So you you know the club should be swung a certain way. Yep. You, you get how the game works, but you, you don't know you how know to. The, you know the, you know the mechanics of your swing. You know you know what causes the golf ball to like do it correctly. You know like, but it's just like, how do I put it together? Yeah, and with that being said, like the average junior to the, like the nineties, eighties golfer, it's like, that's the bottom and then above. So like your high level amateur probably, we probably fit in this bucket. Like we're a high level, like we're a solid player. We're scratched to plus handicaps, but we're not that upper echelon. Most people similar to us sit in this camp. Number the third, third phase. Now, fourth phase, unconscious competence. You're aware 
you know what to do and you know how to maximize what you've learned. You are essentially performing. You are Michael Jordan. You are Kobe Ryan. You just do things. You don't, you're not thinking about where does my elbow need to be when I go to shoot the basketball. Yeah. You your just body, catch Steph Curry. Your body, your body sees the whatever's got in front of you and just reacts, just does. Just executes. And this is key because he told me this, Alan. The only way to get from three to four, and only is, you know, subjective, but a good way to think about it. The only way to get there is to eliminate thought. So three to four is really hard because you know, you know, everything. This is like, sounds like me. I know, I get it. I know how the club needs to swing. I know it needs to, like, I, I get it. I got it. got to play all the classic hits. I know, but why can't I just do it? Because I am in the process of how do I stop thinking and start doing yeah. and like this where Riley's really good. Cause he talks about be an athlete. Don't you dare, you know, just his, how he talks is very much like perform, 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 and your body's going to figure it out. He almost in a way like reverse engineers it where it's like perform, perform, perform. I'll keep you in the bumpers and your body's going to then figure out what it needs to do to perform. So I think that's important sharing those four phases because people then can, people can then identify where they're at and what do they need to do to go to the next step? So I have one question about the, the is it four stages, four phases, four phases, four stages, what, same, whatever yeah. it is, like the four stages of motor patterning. Like I'm listening to it, kind of looking at the, the different words, everyone in whatever, whatever area of whatever you do, like literally like riding a bike or playing music or playing golf. I'm assuming everyone falls into one of these four categories. Correct. This is right? a universal concept for any sort of mode. Like if your brain has to try and operate your body, it, you are, it applies. Yep. Okay. So that, I, cause that's, that's cool information because that's where like you just said any, you, anybody can kind of like put themselves into one of these categories, figure out, you know, why you're in that phase or why you're in that stage and what does it take to kind of build on that and kind of get to the next one. Yeah. And what's really cool. Uh, gosh, I mean, with working with Alan and just like, just learning like golf and maybe even motor programming, but I'm just going to stick with golf. Like golf is very much like a physical therapy session. Like if someone doesn't like lost the ability to walk, they got in a car accident. They have to learn how to walk again. Obviously they're going to be past phase one because they know what walking is, but it's going to be, they know what to do, but they, they don't know how to do it yet. Mm -hmm. And from there they, okay. They can start to walk, but it's really like, it's really thoughtful. Like they have to really think about how do I walk? How do I get everything to work? And then yeah. they're like, they're like me and you, we just, we just get out of the chair and we walk. And during therapy sessions, depending on where these people are at in their stages, you might need like games to play. You might need devices to like help you. Like I've seen, uh, this thing, this cable that hangs on the top of a, of the ceiling comes down, you get in this harness and it basically is carrying you as you just learn to move your legs. You're not strong enough to, right. it doesn't put as much weight up, on your legs, but you're learning how to get your legs to walk mm -hmm. or someone has to grab your pelvis and then like get you to, okay, that's what I need to feel. So just by watching physical therapy sessions and again, like talking with Alan a bunch, um, to me, that applies to golf. And one thing he talked about a lot is the more devices or, yeah, devices, the more things you need to give you that external input, the farther you are away from phase, we'll call it just phase four. Now, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It just tells you where you're at in space. So Right. You're, back you're, back. you're relying on a lot of assistance. Yes. Or whatever you're doing. That's and the let the the less assistance you have and the more you can rely on yourself, like obviously the more experience you're going to get. So yeah, right back to like, we'll go with the, the not walking scenario. The more someone can walk without getting help or having assistance, the more independent they become. Yeah. The more well, they, 
or can That's execute the move without all the bells and whistles, the more independent, the more they own the golf swing or whatever thing they're working on. Yeah. Yeah. If you, I mean, I mean, we don't, we don't know this yet because we're having experience yet, but like most parents, like they're, when their kid starts to walk, they just let them try. Like they're not like yeah. holding them and letting them walk. They just like get up, fall over, do it again, get up, fall over, do it again. So like they learn to walk on their own without really any assistance, which is why humans have such a, they pick up walking very quickly, right? They almost, they almost go from unconscious incompetence and they kind of like skip the third, they go, they go unconscious incompetence where they have no idea what walking is. Then the brain picks up that like, okay, I have a body part that allows me to move. So then yes. they start to apply and try to walk. And then it almost seems like they skip the third stage and they go straight to the fourth stage. Yeah. They go, Oh, I'm upright. Okay. There okay I, I know how to walk. Now it's just unconscious the rest of their life. Now you just chase a kid around the house. You're like, oh gosh, what are they going to get into? But yeah, that's exactly right. So, I mean, the, the point of my ramble is by looking at it from a, a physical therapy perspective, for me now being like the coach, the coaching side, not the player side, it's real, it's easier for me to figure out kind of where someone's at. And then you go, okay, well, if they can't do this, how much assistance through Drills, hands-on, talking to them. What cues, how many of them do they need to then do it? And then do they need something to give them feedback? Okay, now I kind of know where they're at and and then I can educate them and go, okay, this is why you need X, Y, and Z because of A, B, and C. But through that, you start like Ian talks about this a, a bunch, like you need to know yourself as a golfer. So th through these devices or assistance, people start to know themselves. And then eventually like the cliche, you take the training wheels off and then you're just riding the bike downhill and you know what you're doing. But yet for anyone, you have to know and be honest, where are you through the four phases? Again, probably two and three. Most people are going to be two and three. What does it take to go to the next one? And like you defined, it's going to be how much assistance, we'll just keep that word, how much assistance do you need to execute whatever you're trying to do from a motor programming perspective? That's so cool. I mean, that to me, once I learned that, I'm like, golf makes so much more sense. And I don't know why, and probably how my brain works, but... I see it as this kind of like, like decade golf. It's just this objective, impersonal thing. It's just, it is what it, like Ian talked, Ian talked about that a bunch. It is what it is. Yeah. Like, this is where you're at. This is where you want to go. This is what's required. So the player needs to decide, is that what you want to do? Now, it doesn't have to be boring. Like, this might sound boring to grind. Part of that is just part of the rub, part of its discipline, but you can do things that make it, I wouldn't say fun, but make it not boring and a waste of your time. Like back to, it's like the gym. I need to do five sets of 10 today. And if you think about it that way, if you do five sets of 10, but in between each ball, you do like a, a really good practice run. Well, now it's two good reps per one ball. So those 50 golf balls turn into 100 reps of quality reps, right? Quality over quantity. So you are now telling your brain, this is how we're doing the move. And Riley talks about this a bunch. Go at a speed at which you can execute the movement. If that means you're taking a nine iron and doing full swing of or full range of motion, but the ball is chipping 10 yards out in front of you, but you did everything correctly. Again, it's very objective. Then that is what you need to do. It's very, it's very impartial. You can go full bore and struggle and frustrate and want to quit, or we can be disciplined for the session and make leaps and bounds. And that to me is how you see the quick change that gets blasted on social media a bunch. It's for three months. Let's just hunker down. Let's let's cut the BS and let's just 
be persistent and consistent with it. And, you know, we post on social like, Hey, like this guy, there was some change here. Yes. The guy changed. Is he a finished product? By no means, but he went from swinging over the top to swinging on plane. Oh my gosh, that's way better. And we're, we want to praise that. Yep. But now he needs to do this either on his own or on his own with a coach. Rep it out for, for months. For the next ever until we both feel like they are in phase four. And then yep. we can move on to something else. But that's that's the rub. That's yep. It is what it is. That's correct. So for someone who is experiencing a change in their golf game which i would almost assume we all are at some point if not yes. at all the time at all times yes like golf's very golf's very dynamic it's like one day boy does that feel good next day oh what's going what? on right yeah. like it's there's always something that we can be improving on so for those of the for those of us who are experiencing changes or who are experiencing kind of a lull in our golf game and are trying to make changes what like because you're going through it right now like what what does that process look like? Like from the, the moment that you decide that's like I need to make some improvements. So calling a coach, you know, making it making an appointment with someone to have a lesson, you know, just taking that first step, like from that first step forward, like what does that process entail and what can people expect to be dealing with? Yeah. Well, number one, I would start by dispelling any claims you may hear. There is no such thing as a quick fix. There no. is oh no, no. Well, I shouldn't say there's no such thing. There is such a thing as a band-aid, but it's exactly that. At some point, you got to take the band-aid off and the cut is still there or the injury is still there. Despite what you may see on social media, it takes longer than advertised. Yes, you will get better. Yes, you will improve, but it is it is again the decision to be consistent and persistent with what you're doing and gosh i feel like i'm using a lot of buzzwords here but i feel like it's just so true it's also about being efficient uh, it, i again i hit 40 golf holes took me an hour it's efficient in the sense of how much better i got motor programming wise not efficient from or effective reps. from hitting 200 golf balls right right reps reps yeah but the quality of reps was through the roof. My, I was engaged. It was intentful. I was there for the hour. I was yep. there versus let's go kill two or three hours. Oh, I grinded, but you didn't. So what to expect when you've made the decision to go through change is it's going to, it, it is, it's going to take time. It'll take as much time as you want it to. And that's measured to me in like days. So if you are doing 50 quality reps every day, it might take you 21 days. But if you, eh, I'm not really invested. I don't know. It might take you 90 days because you wasted days in between having crap effort or not even practicing because you're like, I'm just too busy. So the, the great thing is, is you're in charge but you're also in charge. So don't blame the coach if you're practicing once a week and seeing him once a month. So you like, have, like you're going to, you're going to get out of it, what you, what you put in. Yeah. Like, so you have to, you have to know it's going to take time. It's going to take effort, but it can go as quickly or as long as you want it to be. And the more diligent you are, the quicker it becomes because your brain's good at picking up stuff. Like that's why, especially kids, we give a kid, hey, go do this for two weeks. You're like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. how did that happen so quick? Yep. It's quick when you're when you're looking at it in two weeks, but for him, it probably felt like a century. Two weeks of doing whatever. Two weeks to a kid is an eternity. But it took two weeks yeah. versus two months because he wasn't quite bought in. Yeah. To make a quick list, buy in, knowing it's going to take time, but then realizing you're in charge of the time frame, so long as you're engaged and intentful during your sessions. I'll, I'll add one more. Know it, knowing it's going to take time and knowing that you're going to suck for yes. quite quite a long time yeah, during no the process. Pretty, no pretty swings allowed. 
like you're like if if you're going from like you're like i need to make some swing changes and you're you get a coach and the coach is like okay here's where you're at here's what we need to get like and it is a dramatic change like you're going to spend countless hours on the range repping it out exactly how your coach explains it and the results are going to suck for a long time he doesn't know how to hit a golf ball that way yeah it's like what is this you want me to do what you want me to yeah. turn bend well I just I, throw we do it we do it like every like most of our kids like if they're struggling with a swing it's like okay assess it find something find the the right mechanical work to kind of improve or alter what's going on in their swing and it's like okay they're athletic kids are athletic enough and everyone who plays golf is athletic enough to experience that change work like they're going to make a swing and golf ball is going to do something really cool and it's like sweet yes and then they expect that for every single swing and it's like you're you're you're, you're killing yourself before you even like start the process well it's, and it's like, like that it's like that cliche of you know the average joe schmo tries something till he gets it right but oh, you're quote. michael jordan's of the world do it till they can't get it wrong. Yeah. An amateur, an amateur practices so they can get it right. And a professional practices so they don't get it wrong. Right. And that's exactly what it is because under pressure, whether it's playing for a couple bucks with your buddies or playing in the masters under the gun, you are going to revert back to the most practiced pattern. So me, what, what motor I, pattern in your brain? Yeah. If I'm going to make par in the last hole, I'm probably going to stand up a little bit. I'm probably going to hit a little drop. It's just going to happen. I also yep. still feel really comfortable hitting that shot. Like if everything, like if it goes out the window yep. and you're asking me, dude, you need to hit a green right now. I'm probably aiming 10 yards right of the green and hitting a little chaser draw yep. because I know I've done it enough that it's, I, I can't get that wrong. Yep. It's not going to stay out to the right. It's just not. So capturing that feeling or that sensation or that knowing with the new pattern is what everyone strives for so that should also be like a motivating factor of okay i should be in whatever scenario and just know i'm going to do this there's just no way i'm not that's when you know you've arrived as far as motor programming goes but um i think a really good topic look at or not even topic just a thing to talk about with this motor programming or improving and what it takes when you're working on something what do you do on the course Mm, i'll kick to you someone's a, a fun one someone goes and sees you okay and you say hey we got to work on impact position so you know we talk about you know chess hits the ball yep and you work through the session and go okay great i'm gonna do that but i'm also playing saturday and today's wednesday oh boy do, did you did you read my mind i had a guy i worked with yesterday which was wednesday oh worked worked us specifically on impact because he could not call the golf club and the golf ball never made contact with each other ever. Like that's, he was just like, I don't know how to hit the golf ball. And I was like, cool. He's playing Saturday. So it's like, okay, here we go. So if I have someone that comes to me and I'm working with them and it's like, it's like a pretty big change in their golf swing. Like this guy, his whole life, like most people have started the downswing with their arms extended into the golf ball thrown their hands through the through impact right like that's just i think that's the most common kind of thing you see out of most golfers is extension flip so that's what he did so we worked on chest movement weight transfer solid contact like that's all we did and so he's like i'm playing saturday i'm like cool here's what i would do don't think about it that's what i, that's what I tell everybody so if you're going through a swing change or if you've been introduced to something that's brand new to your motor patterns, your brain has never done this before. Because we play golf, like we go onto the golf course to play golf, right? Or we're trying to be as athletic as possible on the golf course. Most people struggle because they try to take mechanical onto the golf course, right? They try to think about the mechanical swing. things they're working on in their golf swing. They're trying to think about where their elbow is positioned or what their hand's doing or where my chest is rotating or what my, what, what my lower body's doing. Like they take this, they take this mechanical thought onto the golf course. They're over the golf ball. They think mechanical. And then it's like, how on earth do you expect yourself to play well ever? How do you pull the club back? How do you, how do you, how do you pull the club back when you've got nine things going over your head? Right? So what I tell people and what I told my guy yesterday is 
there's a, there's a couple drills that I gave him. And one of the things that we worked on that he really enjoyed was I kind of, he started to do like the Matthew Wolf, like pump before he goes. So what that does is like, he gets straight into, he gets into the impact position and then pulls the club back. So like before he swings the club, his brain goes, I got to get here. So he's not thinking about getting there in the swing. His brain just goes, I got to get here, swing, get there. Holds so on to it. Get that. Got it. That's what I told him. So like he's playing Saturday. So I'm like the, on, the entire day, I don't want you to think about where the chest is moving. I don't want you to think about weight distribution. I don't want you to think about anything. Just here's like, he, he kind of kind of did it himself. He's like, okay, I'm just going to pump and then go. And it like freed things up. And I'm like, perfect. Because he's not thinking mechanically. He's yes. thinking feel like this is like, he's like be an athlete. Here's a feel replicate that feel. So he's being athletic in the golf swing. He's not thinking about, okay, I got to get my chest to start before the arms, because then I'm going to, you know, extend it in the golf. Like the moment you get mechanical, you're never going to be able to play on the golf course. Now, like for most people who go play, like everyone just goes and plays with their buddies on the weekend. You know, if you guys play for money or not, or whatever, you just play for fun. Right. Those are the times to where you just rely on your motor skills to take over. Like what you're talking about. Like we're trying to get as close to unconscious motor skills as possible. Like that's what's going to allow us to play golf while also doing the correct things mechanically. For a lot of us, that's not going to happen for a while, right? Maybe ever. So what you can do, and I've been, I've been researching this and learning this over the last couple of months is before you hit the golf ball, right? If I'm, if I'm learning something mechanical, like, like Trev, you're learning on, okay, my hips have to go first, got that alignment stick has to hit that pool noodle, chest rotates to the golf ball, right? That's kind of like your big mechanical thought. Yeah. So before I swing the club, like I would go behind the golf ball. And if you've heard of it before, it's called a think box. When you're behind the golf ball, that's your time to go over and think about anything mechanical. Right. If I'm thinking, if I have something mechanical specifically that I'm working on, that's your time to think about it. Okay. Do whatever. If you have a drill that you're working on, kind of do the drill or kind of feel the drill out. Kind of, you just want to feel what you're trying to produce in the golf swing. So do that while you're behind the golf ball. Once you're, once you cross over onto the golf ball, once you start going through your routine and setting up to the golf ball, you just let the, the motor skills take over. Right. And you just ex you just swing the golf club. You execute on the golf swing. However, that happens, it happens. Like you're gonna hit some good ones, you're gonna hit some bad ones. It's going to happen. It's golf. Welcome to the game. Yeah. But well. the the more that you deliberately go to the golf course, to the range and practice and and purposely give give good reps, have efficient reps, you're very conscious of what you're doing, right? The more reps you put in, eventually the 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 stuff that you do on the golf course is going to become more natural yeah it bleeds over like, that's that's how that's how progression works in any area of, of life ever it's like rep 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 and then eventually during you know production or during performance like it just becomes unnatural or it becomes subconscious it becomes natural yeah i i think a quick note with what you just said is the driving range or the practice area whether it's even putting or short game whatever you're working on the game that's the proving ground that or not. The, sorry. That's the training ground. Excuse me. Yep. That's the training ground. That's where you get to make a mess and, and just that's your area to be like freed up and make the craziest over exaggerated feels, whatever you need to do to get you in whatever you're working on. The course is the proving ground. That's where you go. Okay. We're done thinking except for the think box. And then we're just going to play. Yep. So for people who go, okay, well, what do I do? You can think about it that way. One little nugget I'll add, or like subcategory, I'll tell people, here's what you can do. Exactly what you said. Pl just play golf. Do what you know. Don't you dare think about it. Now, if you're going to think about it, you need to either play golf or play swing. And what I mean by play swing is every swing, every rep, you better be trying to do the move. And you only keep score as in you did it or you didn't. And score, that score doesn't that, exist anymore. Yeah. You are just like pass fail. Like, did I do the move? Did I not? Did I do it? Did I not? And see out of how many swings yep. successful, unsuccessful, and that gives you a gauge. Like out of guy shoots 90. Well, he probably only, he probably made 55 swings, 50 swings out of those 50. 
How many were good? How many were not good? Because the worst thing you can do is be right down the middle. Like kind of trying to toe the line. Like that's bad. If you, so if you go into a round of golf and you're like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna think really mechanical about what I was working on, and then you get pissed off on the score, like you like, are okay. done. Nope. Yeah. Bye bye. So um yeah, either play golf or play swing. But usually playing swing is when you play by yourself. Yeah. It's really hard when like you got your buddies, like they want to like they want to go play. They want to have a good time. So like why are you why are you gonna feel like you're working when they're enjoying themselves? That's hard to do. Yep. Now I will say I've done some of the play swing when I'm playing with people, but again, like we don't really play for score. If we're playing for money, okay, like that is that just can't happen. Yeah. But of course, like, hey dude, let's go play a quick nine. That's also our time to see like how much how much can we apply and how much can we try to do right now in a playing situation and back to your to what you said i at times will still be thinking when i'm over the ball i'm like i can't i can't pull the club back so i'm like you're too like you're too in your head of what you're trying to do so it's like okay i need to go reset and then like everyone talks about establish some sort of trigger like one swing thought so like for me i do exactly what, like what you're talking about Get behind the ball. Okay, I'm trying to feel, okay, the legs get around. This arm is, you know, arm's not lowering. So it's like legs get around, arm stays high, and I bring the club around. Okay. Then when I get over the ball, my one thought is don't do anything with your arms. Like if you're going to take the club back, it's all going together. So it's like, okay, at least that cleans it up versus what am I, how many things of the checklist am I trying to do here? Oh, I need to hit the ball like, to, boom, and then it's like <laughs> yards right. You're like, what the hell was that? And what's so important with that is your brain can't tell the difference between reps. Like, was that good? Was that bad? As far as like ingraining it, it just goes, okay, that's another rep. That's another rep. And then before you know it, you have a thousand reps of these like crummy swings. And only like 20 of these quality ones. And you're just like, well, which one do you think you're going to do more often? Yep. So when you're on the training grounds, set the intention, really exaggerate it, really go for it. No pretty swings. Do, do the movement at a speed at which you can actually achieve it. Don't just rip it. Don't try to make golf swings. Try to do movements. So in our notes here, we had a couple things jotted down. How long will it take? We kind of answered that, but we maybe can deep dive that a little bit more. And then managing expectations along the way. So let's say, okay, they bought in. They know there's no such thing as a quick fix. No Band-Aids. Okay, I know there's four phases. I kind of know where I'm at. Now what? What do I expect along the way? Or how do I not want to quit on this one month in? I love talking about managing expectations. Because so many people expect themselves to like figure it out very quickly. It's like, okay, that makes sense. So, you know, sometimes it makes sense. It's like, okay, you're an athlete. You've, you've, you've put in a ton of work. Like you've been playing golf your whole life. And they're just like, okay, I'm going to make these changes and it's going to apply to my golf game. And I'm going to be. Woo, 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 woo. And and I would say like, it's a positive way to think about it, right? Versus this. For sure. Thing, oh my God. Like, because you would never want to do it. For sure, but people let those expectations like ruin their. I mean, they they it the relationship they have with golf, like enjoyment of the game, blah. Like everyone I work with, it's like, what's your goal? I want to have fun. Cool. Yeah. That's that's easy. Because Fair. what's what's fun look like to you? I just want to I just want to be able to hit the golf ball in the general direction and not embarrass myself. It's like okay, let's easy, let's do it. People put those expectations. Then you got people that like put their expectations of like, or, okay, I got to shoot this and I got to do this and I got to make my swing look like this. And then you help them with it, but they expect it like immediately. Like everyone expects right now. Give it to me now. Like no one, everyone is so in for short term. What? Oh, God, God. Short term gains, short term success. Um. Yeah, short term. Yeah, I'll do that. So many people are like obsessed with like the short term success. Like they need it right now. Like, and they just like the the long term, they don't ever think long term because that's what a golf swing is. Like the golf swing is a very much long term process that 
over the course of months and years of practice and commitment, like that's going to become what your golf swing is. Right. And so we talk about these band-aid fixes and these, these quick fixes that you can do to like give yourself those short-term gains, that short-term feeling, right. That, like we can do that, but over the course of your golfing career, right. Is that going to benefit you more or would sticking down, like putting your head down and like putting that work in, would that make it a lot easier for you? And so when we're talking about managing expectations, like if you're making a swing change, I would, I would go into it expecting it to take months and years and I'm going to hit a lot of poor golf shots and I'm going to probably find myself frustrated, but understanding that if you're working with the right coach and your coach understands your goals and you guys are on the same page, that what you're working on is proper. Like it's going to get you to where you want to be. It's just, that's where the discipline comes into play. It's like you go to the driving range and today just, it, to, like the, the whole the whole driving range session just felt like a waste of time but you stuck to the process that was given to you understanding that that over the course of months and years is going to get you to where you want to be yeah and with that being said because someone might hear that and go years like, yes but you were you know your variance was here in six mm -hmm. months it's here in a yeah. year it's here and 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 then you get the picture. Now you're really dialed in. So one last maybe myth to dispel, because I don't know if we did or not. You will never have it. This is not an equation you solve. And once it's solved, it's, yeah. it's solved in the sense of, you know what you need to work on because you know yourself, but it is not solved as you will never hit a bad shot ever again. Yeah. You've, you've it's gained, awesome. you have gained a ton. You go to a coach, coach says, Look at this. This is what your swing looks like. Here's what you're doing. This is what it causes, right? I like to build, like my big thing is like, I look at people and I go, you're going to become very aware of what's happening in your golf swing. Know yourself. Here's, here's awareness. You're going to know what your golf swing does. You make a swing, you know what causes that swing. Over time, you get to the point where all that knowledge you have is now deeply rooted into your brain. Now it, Now you understand it. It becomes conscious. Like sometimes it becomes unconscious to where you get to make swings you get to assess yourself. You get to figure out what's going on. Now, over the course of years, the 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 percentage of good shots to bad shots or appropriate shots to inappropriate shots becomes much higher. The moments, the, the bad moments are still going to happen, but now you've got so much knowledge in your brain that you're like, I can do that. I can make that adjustment. Like, I know what to do. Like, so now it becomes like a fun game you get to play with yourself as before. It's like, make a bad swing you're like i don't know what the heck's happening and then it's just guesswork frustration all that stuff when it's all relative right you're we're always going to hit chunks but two years ago sally when she chunked the ball it went a foot in front of her now when she chunks the ball it only goes 10 yards short of how far her eight iron goes right so you know yourself but the margins or the variance is tightened up so much but it is always a maintenance thing but What's really cool is working with the coach, you kind of get the answers to your own test. But now it's how do you just keep like morale again? Rally talked about this. How do you stay in the bumpers? So, like for me, I'm always going to probably have the noodle and the guy across my arm. But how often do I need to go back to it? Mm -hmm. How many reps do I need to go and do it? But like that, those are my bumpers because I fight early extension with my arm pulling down. So I need to work on the opposite. That will a, be a forever thing. Tiger probably fights the same problems. Roy fights similar. Like everyone fights a couple problems, but they have the fail safes in place. So they don't go from here to rock bottom. And they're mm -hmm. like, I don't know how to make the climb back up. Like they're not on this artificial uh platform it's solid and they just go down they just that's why they do this all day they just bounce in between these levels versus these dramatic changes so i think one thing for people to remember is don't go into changing something thinking you'll never have to not change it again like yeah. it's not solved you've just finally addressed it and you have the things in place to not let it go back to how it was on like day one session with coach Lobeck. Like, 
like you work with the guy you worked with yesterday, you fast forward a year, he has the things in place where he will never not make contact like with the ball again. Like it's yep. like, that's, that is progress. That is you getting better. And it's just how back to the quote, how many times can you do it without getting it wrong? That's how you measure and manage out of 10 golf balls. How many times did I do it? It will, when we first started, it was two out of 10. Now it's five. That's better. Versus, well, I can't do it every time. It's like, no, 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 no. Six months ago, you can only do it two out of 10. Now you can do it five. Over a course of a round, that's, let's just say again, 50 swings. That's 33 swings out of 50 versus 10. Mm-hmm. You're getting better. You are learning. You're improving. Your motor programming is picking up what you're trying to put down. I'll leave, I'll leave everyone with this one. This is like, Kobe didn't say it, but it's like one of the one of one of the more famous like stories and phrases that Kobe would use. And if anyone knows who I am, like his his life and his like just way of being is just how I try to live my life. Like Kobe's Kobe's the man. So this is something that he would always say. It's like you get a stone cutter who hacks away at a boulder and he hacks away at it ten times, twenty times, a hundred times, and on the hundred and first strike it breaks, right? And a smart person knows that it wasn't the 101st strike that broke it. It was the 100 previous, right? So going into any changes you make in your life, in your golf game, understanding that the process to getting where you want to be is going to get you the results you're looking for. 